the protagonist in my book is a priest. And uh, this is a priest who, at the best of times, is struggling with his humanity. And it is a struggle that's intensified by the suppression of his manhood. He doesn't realize that when he first begins this journey that he is within a hierarchical situation in which things happen about which nothing can be done, but he learns that eventually. And what he learns about is that uh, not only do th these things happen, not only can they not be corrected, but the role that is assigned to him as a priest is to protect the superficial power of the institution of which he's a part. And I think this happens to a lot of people in a lot of different institutions. You, we become persuaded that the institution is more important than we or any other part of it. And that our job is to maintain the integrity of the institution at all costs. And my protagonist, as a priest, finds himself caught up in covering up really ugly situations within his diocese, making them go away and to create the impression that they are being solved. And it is a job that leads him deeper and deeper into a lot of questions about who he is as a priest first, <coughs> Pathetic in a way, 
But in such circumstances, one must fall, not fall into their traps. They want to lure you into a place where there are no certainties and where there are no rules and where struggles are won by nimble creativity. You tell me, he persists, never mind the weasel evasions. You tell me with a straight face that you never, not once, felt the heat of temptation. Man, woman, child, beast, something, somewhere, must have stirred the most natural impulse in your frigid being. The point, I replied, is that we have made a conscious choice. Ah, oh, come on, he said, waving an impatient hand. I bulldozed onward. We were told up front, explicitly, choose between the desires of the world and the life of sacrifice and service. Nobody said it would be easy. In fact, we were told it would be hard. You stepped forward and you accepted the order. Ah, but they didn't tell us. How hard, he said. I tried to read his expression for awareness of the double meaning. He had the eyes of a poker player. I decided to ignore the remark. Anyway, I said, the big issue here isn't canon law. We're talking about the criminal code. You could be in a worse spot than you are standing here in front of me. Just be thankful I'm not a lawyer or a cop. Worse still, if his father ever got a hold of you, you should be really grateful. He laughed, slapped his forehead theatrically. Oh, now I get it. This is a situation that could be normally fixed by a thrashing, or say, a couple of years in Kingston Pen. And you, out of your innate compassion, you're going to spare me that. You're going to make me disappear like a magician. Poof. Thanks a lot. I think he realized then that he'd gone too far. He'd strayed into the self-pity that always dissolves the integrity of logic. And I just stared at him, letting it all sink in. Okay, he said finally, let's be real. It isn't like I'm gay or anything. It isn't like I'm queer. Like this is going to be a long-term project. What the hell has gay got to do with anything? Huh. Mr. Progressive all of a sudden. Mr. Political Correctness. Come on, it was a stupid mistake. I'm sorry. There was a whole lot of stupid mistakes. Give me a break, for God's sakes. He was looking for something. I happened to be a bystander. I was going through a bad time mentally. Who's the victim here? He's a kid, for Christ's sake, I blurted. He was little more than a child when you first went after him. You exploited him. Exploited him? I exploited him? Do you realize how this started? I gave him a hug. So it went from there. But it was consensual. You saw him. He's a man for the love of God. Never mind his age. It started with a hug. I give lots of people hugs when I think they need them. People growing up like I did. Not getting the warmth and the love that they need at home. So it went from there to a hand job. <laughs> Not everybody's as lucky as you, obviously. We're growing up secure, being nurtured, being hugged full of moral certainties. <laughs> Fuck you, I said, before I had time to recover my control. He turned his face away, but not before I saw the smile. 